Here's another little grouping of tabletop telescopes. And none of these is really uh, what I would call a great telescope in any way, shape, or form. They all have uh, grossly inadequate mounts. They're straight through and they have pretty high magnifications for small apertures. They're just really not good telescopes. And they also have real narrow fields of view. No ability to interchange eyepieces on these. So uh, this is what you get. These are cheap department store type telescopes from the, well, probably from the 50s, 60s, 70s, maybe. Anyway, they're not, uh, they're not good quality, but they make a nice little grouping and they're kind of pretty. I love the color on the Celsi, the red and white, beautiful. This one with the kind of pale green is very nice. Tasco, this is a straight kind of classic black and white deal. Um, these are the only difference really between these scopes, any substantial, well this one's maybe a smaller aperture. I think this is probably, it says 40 power, but it doesn't tell you the aperture. That right away tells you it's not a very big aperture. 30 millimeters max. Anyway, this is a small one. These are both 40 millimeter telescopes. This one does feature a zoom eyepiece. Woohoo! Look at that! So you can zoom the power way in if you want to. This one already has the power set to real high in a narrow field of view, so these are darn near impossible to use. Poor kid would struggle, struggle mightily trying to make any sense of this at all. Maybe they could look at the moon. That would be about it. Here is something that any parent would probably fall prey to easily. Uh, as a matter of fact, I bought one of these for one of my kids many years ago. And I guess it was, uh, I don't know, 1980s, I suppose, because that's how old my kids were. Anyway, may have not been new, new when I bought it. Anyway, this is a Mickey Mouse telescope. And, uh, Endorsed by the Disney Company, apparently. I don't know. Well, it's got Mickey Mouse. It pretty much has to be approved by them, doesn't it? Now, the one thing about this, it is, it does seem to be relatively child-friendly. That is, the child can't probably do too much damage to it or hurt themselves with it. So that's kind of cool. Let's see if we can get this thing out of here. Well, there we are. Okay. All right, now all we have to do is, this is something that a mechanically challenged parent will clearly be doing at uh, probably 1 a.m. on Christmas morning, something like that. Let's see if we can make this go through here. Wow, look at that. Looks like the thing actually works. Okay, and there's Mickey riding right on top of the telescope. How very cool. I mean, if a kid bounced on that pretty hard, they could, they could certainly break it. But other than that, it seems to have some distinct advantages. Uh, I guess the only way you can turn it in azimuth is by actually turning a whole telescope. Interesting, isn't it? Hmm. Uh, but at least you have altitude control like so. Let's take a look at this big, powerful... Look at the size of that objective. That's probably, oh, you know, maybe one and a half inches. Maybe 30, 35 millimeters clear aperture there. Oh, boy. I'm sure it's a singlet lens that is uh, not a real high quality lens, have a lot of chromatic aberration, but you don't buy something like this for optics, uh, hopefully. There's the focus, the focus are actually work. So that is the charming Mickey Mouse telescope.
nearly identical twins, uh, well obviously not twins. This is a Tasco 20 by 40 millimeter. Cute little devil. I love the, the form of these things, both of them. That's a 20 by 40. This is a uh, Lafayette 30 by 60 millimeter. I'm pretty sure these were made in the same factory. They're almost identical in many respects. Uh, the paint color is nearly the same. The little prism systems are nearly the same. <clears throat> They're very charming little telescopes. Somewhat limited in their function and their, um, I mean, they're a spotter scope. They're not designed for astronomy, so they have a limited amount of range in terms of altitude. This one is so special that it gets a segment of its own. This is the Hobbycraft Astronaut 16X. Um, it is a satellite spotter's telescope for watching the U.S. Air Force Space Fortress. I didn't know we had one of those back in 1956, but apparently we did. This is copyright 1956. So either they, well, maybe they were traveling ahead in time. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, it's pretty spectacular, don't you think? So let's see what's in the box. Ooh, look at there. There's the instrument. Beautiful. Woo, woo, wee. Yeah. Oh, uh oh, almost broke it. That's just typical for what a child might do. All right, let's look at this wonderful tripod stand. Oh, and it comes with a full set of instructions. Okay, well, I spent the last half hour memorizing the instructions here on the instruction sheet. I think I have it down now. I can hopefully avoid breaking it any further. So here's how you're supposed to work it. You focus by doing so. This, I don't know if that's ever supposed to come out or not. Anyway. That's only part of it. Now, the instructions are very clear about how you use this tripod. What you do is you put this in here, and then you spread these 10, 10, inches, 10 inches apart. Well, <laughs> maybe not 10 inches apart, maybe more like 2 inches apart. So apparently this telescope is really only good for something at a certain elevation above the horizon. So all you have to do is just aim this in the direction of the moon, and then wait for it to be that elevation above the horizon and then you should be able to look at the moon if you uh oh assuming you don't by focusing it throw it off balance uh, obviously this is purely a marketing ploy not much of any substance here unfortunately but that's the way toy telescopes have been for many 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 years here we have a Milben 10 power telescope for young scientists. Let's see what we've got in the box. Pretty much traditional junky kind of a telescope. Uh, dates from uh, I would guess maybe the 50s or 60s, something like that. I like the fact that it's uh, it's made of metal instead of plastic. So that's kind of cool. Now let's see if we can set this baby up. There we have it. Doesn't balance too well and it's pretty darn wobbly. <laughs> it's very wobbly. <laughs> Anyhow, that's the Milben 10X telescope. Probably, I would guess 1960s or so.